Hey guys, Justin here, and building computers is a really fun thing to do. It's actually really easy, and it's not as hard as you might think it is. I mean, with the flexibility to choose your own parts, and everything that you want in your own computer, that's one of the best reasons to build your own computers in the first place. So today, I want to show you guys how to build your own gaming computer from start to finish, and just how easy it is. So anyways, let's get started. Alright, so first things first, let's set up the motherboard. Gently taking the motherboard out of the box, be sure to set it on top of the motherboard box as it serves as an anti-static surface, but also be careful to handle it only by the plastic parts. Now while all these slots and sockets might look a bit confusing, we'll go over that in a bit so don't worry. So now we can pull out our CPU, so first thing you want to do is just pull the lever back on the CPU socket and be sure to align that little gold arrow notch on the corner of the CPU with the little arrow on the CPU socket as well, and with that the CPU should slide right in. So now all you have to do is push the lever back down, and with a little bit of added force, it should fit right back in. Now if you're only installing a stock cooler, it's simple enough as setting it on the CPU block and pushing down on the latch, at least for AMD. Of course for stock coolers, there's thermal paste already on it, but if you don't have that, be sure to apply your own. Now all that's left is to attach the fan connector to the CPU header on the motherboard. So next, installing RAM is as easy as ever, as all you need to do is align the notches on the RAM slots with those on the RAM and just press down firmly. Really everything should just click into place and you should be good to go from there. Okay, so now we have to set up the computer case, so just simply unscrew the side panels to reveal the entire inside. So first things first, you want to install the power supply, so align the power supply so it fits in with the power supply slot at either the top or the bottom of the case with the screw holes aligning as well. And all you have to do is take some screws included in the case and just screw it in. Also it's good to note that you should always evenly screw everything in, kind of like an X pattern. Alright so now that our power supply is installed, take the attached IO plate from the motherboard box and press it into the IO slot that's at the back of the case. Now this will require a bit of a more legwork, but after a bit more force, everything should click into place. Alright, so at this point, now we have everything in our case, so the next thing is to throw in our motherboard. It's important that you install your case's standoffs, or you could seriously damage your motherboard, but in our case, there's no standoffs needed. So make sure your motherboard screw holes are aligned with that of the case, and the ports on the motherboard should be facing the back IO shield as well. From here on out, it's as simple as just screwing in the motherboard to the case. And just again, be sure to screw it in corners first, kind of like in an X pattern. Alright, so we're already about halfway down to finishing up our PC, and the next thing is to throw in our storage drives. In my case, an SSD is all I've got, so simply just screw it into a drive bay, and of course that will vary depending on what case you have, and in some cases, you might have to screw it into the bottom. Of course, now's the time to install any other drives you might have, such as a CD disk reader, or a hard drive as well. Alright, so now we're down to a bit of a more tedious part, wiring. And first, you're going to want to connect your 24-pin main connector from the power supply to the header on the motherboard. As always, it should just click into place, but next, now we have to connect our fan headers from either the front and the back of the case to our fan headers on the motherboard as well. After that, connect the 4-pin cable for the CPU into the proper header as well. And once that's finished, to wire up the SSD, just connect the SATA power cable from the power supply to the proper port on your SSD. And be sure to connect the SATA data cable from the SSD to the SATA slot on the motherboard as well. Now just plug in these tiny front panel connectors to the headers on the motherboard as well. And while it may seem confusing, you can always take them out or redo them if necessary. And also be sure to check the polarity, it's either going to be positive or negative so just be sure of that as well. But lastly, the USB and HD audio connectors go into the headers for each on the board and they both should be labeled. And all of these small connectors are just for the front panel I.O. ports. Now we're down to the fun part, installing our GPU or graphics card. So first things first, unscrew the two PCI slots at the back, taking the card out of the box, and slide the graphics card into the PCI slot on the motherboard. After that, be sure to check that the latch is shut, keeping the card in place, as everything should have clicked in. Now depending on what card you have, you may need to connect another 4-pin power cable to the GPU as well so it gets that power to run. But finally, just screw the card back into place from the side, and that should be it. So really, we're just about done building the actual PC. So take that power cable that should be in your power supply box and hook it up into your power supply and into a wall plug. You're also going to want to connect the monitor into the graphics slot as well. And if everything has gone right and you didn't screw up, when you turn on the computer, the PC should just boot up into the BIOS page where you can now install Windows. 
If everything didn't go well, be sure to check the wiring and the cabling as that's where most of the problems can come from. Alright, so now that you're done building the actual PC, you're going to want to take care of the cable management, which might seem like a hell to deal with, and I definitely recommend some zip ties as well. Anyways guys, that'll do it for this video. So this is just really how to build your own computer, and hopefully you found this tutorial easy to go along with, I guess. Of course, if you want to see some more PC-related videos, go ahead and comment down below and let me know as well. Also, let me know any other questions you might have with building your own computer as well. I'll try to help all you guys out as much as I can. But other than that, if you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up or thumbs down if you hated it. And this time, comment down below, hashtag chopsticks if you made it to this part of the video as well. But other than that, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.